Hi, my name is Bente, I'm the Norris Witch and welcome to another video on the Norris Gods. This time we will talk about Freyr. And uh, I thought, as always, I would start out with what we know about Freyr from the sources. Then I will go into my experiences with, with Freyr, which aren't a lot, and also the community's experiences with Freyr. And lastly, I will give you some inspiration for possible offerings for Freyr. Let's do it. Freyr is one of the Vanir gods. He is the son of the god Njörð with his sister. Yes, the relationships between brother and sister seem to be pretty normal for the Vanir. And uh, yeah, Freyr is also the twin brother of Freya. You probably knew that already, it's pretty well known. Freyr also has a wife called Gerðr, who is a Jotun. What's very interesting about Freyr is that Snorri has a lot of interesting things to say about him. For example, in the Inklinga saga, he writes that Freyr was actually a Swedish king. He also there has a wife called Gerðr, but also a son called Fjolnir. From there and also from other sources, we know that one other name for Freyr is Ing or Ingvi. It's possibly an older name because Freyr translated only means Lord. So it's possible that Ing or Ingvi was his actual name and Freyr was only a title he got later on. But we don't know that for sure, uh, but from the Inglinga saga we know that Ing or Ingvi was another name for Freyr and that the Ingling dynasty, the name for the Ingling dynasty derives from his name because the Ingling kings claimed that they were descendants of Freyr. But Snorri also sometimes equates him with another king named Frodi, under whose reign there was a long time of peace and good harvests and this is now known as the Peace of Frodi. As I already said, Freyr is one of the Vanir gods, possibly even the most important Vanir god. Freyr is also a very, very important, if not the important, fertility god. Freyr rules over some weather aspects, especially rain and sunshine. And with that, of course, he also rules over the produce of the earth and good harvests. So everything that has to do with prosperity and fertility and stuff. But he's also a god of peace, and he also rules over human fertility, human reproduction. And this is very interesting because he is depicted a lot of the times also with a huge erect phallus. Freyr is known to live in Alfheimr, the world of the Alfar, the elves. And he's also mentioned as the king of the Alfar. So this kind of ties back into him being connected to nature, to the land, to the spirits of the land, to fertility, to prosperity. He owns some magical items like, for example, the ship Skidblavnir and the golden boar Gütlinborsti that were both made by the dwarves in a smithing contest. The golden boar Gütlinborsti also pulls his chariot, so he's one of the gods and goddesses that are driving around in a chariot <laughs> pulled by some kind of animal, just like his twin sister Freya, for example, her chariot is being pulled by cats, or for example, Thor, his chariot is being pulled by two goats. The ship Skivblavnir is magical because it always has favorable wind, and most important, it can be folded and folded and folded up until the point where it fits into a little bag, and it's known to be the best of all ships. Freya's relationship to his wife Gerther is very interesting because we actually know the story about how they came together and um, Freyr actually saw Gerther and fell in love immediately but Gerther didn't even know that he existed so uh, he kind of got one of his servants Skipnir to go over to Gerther and to convince her to marry him. The problem is that Gerther didn't want to marry Freyr so Skidnir had to basically threaten her and hex her so that she would marry Freyr. And in the end, he succeeded. The big problem about this is that for Skidnir to convince Gerdr to marry Freyr, Freyr had to give his sword to Skidnir as a payment, basically. But during Ragnarök, Freyr now doesn't have a sword, so he has to fight the fire giant Surtr with an antler, which of course isn't really effective, and he dies. We know that historically there was a big cult that worshipped Freyr, 
This is attested to by a lot of place names that derive from his name, especially in Sweden. Adam von Bremen also describes a temple in Uppsala, Sweden, where there were statues for three gods, Odin, Thor and Freyr. And again, here Freyr is depicted on the statue with a giant phallus. And again, this ties back to his importance for fertility. Saxo Grammaticus also describes rituals to Freyr, Freyr bloats, and they were apparently interesting, at least they were pretty offensive to Saxo, who was a Christian. According to Saxo, Freyr bloats included things like unmanly clatter of bells, mimes clapping upon the stage, and effeminate gestures, but also human sacrifice. Freyr is also very closely related to a horse cult. Sacred horses were kept in his sanctuary in Thrandheim, Norway, and also in his temples in Iceland. They were also, or horses were also given as offerings to Freyr, and these sacred horses were not to be ridden. So these are the things that we know about Freyr, but now let's get more into a UPG or possibly SPG territory. First of all, my experiences with Freyr, they are very little. So the only things that I can tell you is some offerings that I gave him that he liked. For example, beer. I also gave him bread, for example, one time. Um, and in general, like his energy seems pretty chill. Like it's, it's not like the typical masculine energy that you would think of. I mean, he is a god of peace. And that's also what he felt like to me. So his energy felt very peaceful, very tranquil, very calm and collected. But yeah, that is basically all that I can tell you because I didn't really very closely work with him. So let us get into the community's experiences. Uh, sadly, there aren't that many. It seems like not very many people work with Freyr, sadly, because I think Freyr is a very nice entity. But let's see what you had to say. When you feel the sun on your shoulders, like a supportive hug on a cold day, that's Freyr. I see that actually, especially with him also uh, ruling over sunshine. <laughs> For me, he wanted offerings of pennies, daily offerings of mead, hard cider or strangely blueberry wine. He came in as a teacher for me to help me learn a spiritual practice in the old ways. Mead, okay, mead works for any Norse deity, I feel like. Um, hard cider and blueberry wine, I don't feel like that's so strange. I feel like apple wines and beers and anything that has to do with, with grains or fruit, I feel like that makes a lot of sense because he is so closely tied to the fertility of the land and to good harvests. I have found that Freyr likes apple juice, especially when I share it in the morning. Of course, beer and meat are also up there. Sandalwood incense also. This is just my experience with him. Yeah, again, apple juice, I feel like apple juice makes a whole lot of sense, especially when it's during fall, when there is actually an apple harvest, so. I found and also read that he likes offerings of beer. Same. I generally offer the gods beer anyway, so win-win. Anyway, I ended up with him on my altar thanks to Thor. Freyr then led me to Njörð. He showed me the sun as a visual for him and then the sea for Njörð. I just recently offered to him because I thought he wanted to tell me something. Today I feel as if he maybe cleared something out of my way. So the sun for him as a symbol makes sense, personally, I feel like, because he is ruling over the sunshine. I gotta be painfully honest, his type of masculine really turns me off. It's kind of intimidating and intense for me. That's interesting because I don't feel him as being intense at all. For example, Freya, I feel like, is much more intense than Freyr is. Freyr, to me, is very chill and calm and collected. Thor is much more intense, I would say. I don't know, but this was someone's experience. All right, so these were the communities and my experiences. Not that many, unfortunately, but if you work with Freyr, if you have a relationship with Freyr and uh, you have something that you want to share with us, then of course, put that in the comments everyone, I bet everyone, would uh, very much love to read it. But now let us get into offerings. One of the things I already told you about is any type of local produce. Sorry, my cat is playing with a bell. Um, so any, any kind of local produce. Since 
Freyr, as I said, is related to the harvests, especially to good harvests. Um, it, it really makes sense to give him anything that was locally produced in your area as an offering. For example, where I live in fall, there is uh, always a lot of apples that are being harvested. We have a lot of apple trees around. So apples during fall, for example, would be a great offering to Freyr. Or if there's a wheat or some kind of grain harvest, then give him bread that was made with these grains. Anything like that, I feel like would be a great offering to Freyr. Also, of course, as was already said, beer. Beer works great, but also mead, of course. Mead always works. Uh, any kinds of ciders or berry wines, things like that, especially if it was made out of produce from your area. Next up, I feel like antlers or like deer skulls or anything like that would make sense because as I told you about, he uh, fought during the Ragnarok with an antler. So anything antler related also makes sense. Also, anything sex related? just like for Freya also works for Freyr because, well, he is not depicted with a huge phallus for no reason. I mean, he is related to human fertility and reproduction and fertility and stuff, so anything sex-related makes sense. And then lastly, of course, if you can find anything that relates to Gyllenborsti or to Skivblavnir or to horses in general, because as I said, he's related to horse cults, then anything like that also is a great offering to Freyr. And that is everything that I wanted to cover in this video. As always, if you have any further info about Freyr or any UPG or SPG, any experiences, then of course share them in the comments so that we can learn together. Before I end this video, as always, a little patron shout out. Thank you so, so much to Annalena, Madison, Bast, Yukai, Kirby, Liz, Bastetcha, Lisa, Sigrun, Ashley, Erika, Sturfried Stars, Mars Mortis, Christopher, Glacier, August, The Court Jester, Tia, Fabienne, Jella, JB, Tim, Anna, Lorna, Laura, Amber, Kristen, John, Ivy, Phoenix, Anton, Jenny, Tyler, Els, Maggie, Betty, Misty, Athena, Tiffany, Amy, Colette, Tell, Timothy, Coffee, the Honorary Gossip Squirrel, Bjorn and Ash. Thank you so, so much for supporting me and my channel. As always, I really, really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to subscribe and give a thumbs up. Check out all of my other social media platforms and of course my online shop for ethically and sustainably sourced witchcraft and paganism tools. And of course, if you maybe want to support my channel, then you can of course check out my Patreon. And I will see you in the next video. Bye!